Most people, when contacting me about a Jungian analysis, want to know what happens in sessions. To answer this question, this short video deals with what I do in analysis. Please bear in mind that each analysis is unique. So what I'd like to do is just overview some of the possible experiences an individual may have in the analytic hour. I meet with people in my office in Victoria, British Columbia in Canada, or I'll meet with them online via Skype, iChat, or FaceTime. I meet with individuals once a week, and in some cases two or three times a week. For the purposes of this video, I will use the terms analysis and psychoanalysis interchangeably because they both refer to the same issue. Most sessions involve the person I'm working with talking with me about their experiences of daily life, both current and past. Analysis addresses many of the core issues of life, be it a challenge someone is facing, such as depression or anxiety, or the impact on their personality from a rapid change or a trauma. Ultimately, what we are trying to address in the analytic sessions is what's the purpose of the experience you're having? What is the psyche trying to point you towards? In other words, what is the individuation process saying about how you live your life? And ultimately, what is the meaning that you attribute to the way you live? The approach that distinguishes analysis from ordinary psychotherapy is that the whole psyche is addressed because we take a depth psychology approach, meaning that we need to know not just what the ego is saying, as a cognitive behavioral approach would hold, but we also have to address what the unconscious is saying and how the unconscious symbolically represents itself not only in our body, but our dreams, our fantasies, our ideas, and our choices. So apart from dealing with the symptoms of the distress, say for example depression, we have to ask ourselves, what are these symptoms trying to alter in the personality? What are they trying to lead us towards? This means that analysis views, say, the symptoms of depression as having a functional value, a purpose of value. The psyche is trying to get us to change something. And we notice this when we look at something such as depression and realize that individuals often engage in quite characteristic behaviors and rituals in response to the depressive affect that they are experiencing. By which I mean that an individual in the grip of depression may retreat from the world, stop seeing their friends, may stop uh, going to work, may actually retreat from their own family. And ultimately what often happens is an individual goes into a quiet dark space, switches off the TV, doesn't answer the phone and just stares at the wall or sits in a very, very black mood. From a Jungian perspective, the question we would have is, in that very dark, depressed space, what is it that you do think about? And in many cases, the individual who's in the grip of the depression will tell us that they are depressed about a way they're living, a choice they've made, or they may even be depressed about something that they've lost. And so the depression is trying to help the psyche resolve the central issue or resolve the central problem that it doesn't seem to be able to solve on its own. And so the depression becomes an assistant towards the solving of this problem. Another very important issue about the analysis is to ask the individual what drew them to attend analysis in the first place? And why did they start now and not last year? Because all along, the individual who's sitting with me in the analysis is trying to answer a fundamental question about the meaning or the purpose of their life. For those of you that are familiar with the Grail legend, 
will recall that Parseval, or the central character in the Grail legend, failed to ask a fundamental question when he found himself in the Grail castle. And that question, one of three, was, What ails thee, my king? He failed to ask the Grail king what the problem was. Now that question in that beautiful Grail legend is a fundamental question in a psychoanalytic encounter, in that I, as the analyst, am trying to ask the individual, what ails thee? What causes this pain that you are experiencing? What is the issue that you're trying to solve to gain a better sense of purpose and meaning in your life? One of the common issues that people come to a psychoanalysis for is to address midlife issues. Some people may have a midlife crisis in which they suddenly realize that they don't want to be in this marriage anymore or they no longer want to work in their profession or their occupation and everything that they've held to be consistent and true and real suddenly seems to be unreal and inconsistent and they find themselves in a free fall. A free fall that in essence is saying to them you have to find another way of being in the world, another way of understanding yourself in the world. And one of the key things in the psychoanalytic encounter is that we have to bear in mind not just what the external world is asking of the individual, but what the internal world is asking as well. We have to navigate that balance. And very often, a midlife crisis will be a crisis from within. Because your marriage is the same, your occupation is the same, your job is the same, your house is the same, but you don't feel the same in them. So as I mentioned before, psychoanalysis really takes the role of the unconscious as central to the process. By which I mean, we don't just address the questions of the ego, such as, should I change my job? Should I end my marriage? but we have to address those questions from the perspective of the unconscious as well. And in a Jungian psychoanalysis, we're interested in the unconscious in two specific areas. One, the personal unconscious, and secondly, the collective unconscious. There are a wide number of specific approaches in a Jungian analysis that attempt to address the messages of the unconscious. The one most of us are familiar with would be dreams. Another approach would be the use of active imagination. We could also use psychodrama. We could use art, and by art I simply mean making marks on a piece of paper. We can also do some enactments. We can do, most of you have heard of this one, an empty chair technique. But very importantly, we can also address what the individual is projecting onto. So look at their shadow projections, look at the projections they have to characters in movies, look at how they respond and maybe even identify with individuals in literature, in poetry. So there's a number of ways that we can bring into the analysis the very, very powerful messages from the unconscious. A significant proportion of my practice is now online in that I see people using Skype or iChat or FaceTime from throughout the UK, Canada, the US, Scandinavia, Mexico and Malaysia. There are a number of reasons why people use Skype in analysis but the most common one is that they live in a geographic area where they do not have ready access to a qualified Jungian psychoanalyst and so they're able to in essence commute to my office via Skype. If you would like more information about Jungian psychoanalysis and my practice please visit my website at www.jungian.ca. If you're interested in beginning an analysis with me please contact me. I don't charge for the initial hour, as it's an opportunity for both of us to see if there's a fit of our personalities, but also to make sure that 
a psychoanalysis is the optimum way for you to go about addressing the needs that you have.